Where we disagree is when the political environment has to get involved, where we have to put this bill on the floor of the Senate and decide how much time an agency that specializes in environmental protection in every aspect of the state of New York, whether, whether it comes to our brooks and streams and rivers or, or underground wells or any other type of, uh, type of pollution or air pollution or ground pollution that could take place, they are the experts. This is what they do for a living. They're not legislators that, that get involved in a little bit of everything, but they are scientists and experts who are dealing with this. The Senator, I agree that they screwed up badly in Pennsylvania. I'm glad that you went to Pennsylvania, and, and I know that the DEC in New York is looking very carefully. And I've said this time and time again, and I'll say it again tonight, shame on the state of Pennsylvania, shame on their Department of Environmental Protection, as they call it, because they screwed up badly. They didn't keep an eye on those who were drilling. They didn't keep an eye uh, on, on environmental factors on behalf of the citizens of that state. And I know that the people at the Department of Environmental Conservation in the state of New York not only are learning from that, but are going to make sure that when we regulate and we begin the process of hydrofracking, that it's going to be done in a safe, safe, safe manner. And it's going to be done in a manner that protects the environment. And, and Senator, I, I always get you know, concerned when I hear people say they worry about the water table, and, and that's important, and as the commissioners told me, the water table goes down, and again, I'm not a scientist or an expert, about 800 feet, and hydrofacking goes down about two miles, well below the water table. So, you know, when, when, I, when I hear those arguments from time to time, I, I just wonder if the people who, and I'm, I'm not saying you, sir, the people who bring those arguments up about contaminating the water table really understand uh, what, what they're talking about. See, I believe that the DEC is the best agency in this state uh, to move forward with, with safe drilling and, in this case, hydrofracking. Now, let me take uh, the, the other side of the issue that talks about the economics. Uh, I, too, like everybody in this chamber, care very deeply about the air quality, the drinking water, and, and Senator Thompson, you're right, I don't want to contaminate one well. And when, when someone does take that bad aspirin, you're right, you hear about uh, how bad the company is and, and, and what takes place, and certainly uh, the disaster, the shameful disaster in the Gulf uh, does not help this whole process as we, we look to move forward. But let me ask all of you in this chamber this. Please keep an open mind. Don't let the political process get involved here. Let the experts, let the people that we talk about day in and day out in the various conversations that take place on this floor about protecting our environment at the DEC, let them make the determination. They're the people who understand. Let them make the scientific determination as to whether or not hydrofracking is going to be safe and when it is going to be safe and we're going to move forward how we do it in that process so that we don't contaminate any wells. Now let's talk about the economy. I live in upstate New York. I live in Broome County and my district is uh, Shenango, Broome, and Tioga County. Some of you have uh, come to that part of the state. It's a beautiful part of the state. There's probably about 10, 12 counties in upstate New York, maybe a few more, that are involved in the drilling process and, and where Marcellus Shale uh, for hydrofracking is uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, one of the richest in the country, one of the richest in the country. Uh, they claim there's enough uh, gas in the Marcellus Shale uh, under upstate New York that can provide uh, natural gas for this country for, for decades, uh, many decades to come. From an economic standpoint, the community I live in has been devastated. We used to be the central community for defense contracting. And as a matter of fact, a couple years ago, we got the presidential helicopter at Lockheed Martin. They hired almost 2,500 people, average salary at about $90,000 a year. And then President Obama decided he was going to eliminate that project. They laid those 2,500 people off and another 1,000 on top of that. Not only did that hurt us, but it also hurt the, uh, the effect with, with, with local businesses.
uh, and it was unfortunate because billions were spent across the country on stimulus money, and all they had to do is keep that project going. Where am I going with this? We need jobs. The people that I represent, the farmers, let's talk about that. The farmers have signed lease opportunities that in some cases bringing hundreds of thousands, in some cases millions of dollars to them. Opportunities to pay off the back taxes on their farm. We talked about farm workers' rights just a few minutes ago. We talked about the struggle that farmers have. Well, many of the farmers in upstate New York now have an opportunity to pay the taxes off, pay the, the high cost of uh, agriculture, the, the equipment that they have to go. Those of you, Senator Albertine and others, Senator Young, who have been involved in the process know uh, the capital expenditure that our farmers have to, have to make. They now have an opportunity because there's an economic opportunity that has come to them. Because their land is precious. Underneath their land is a very, very uh, valuable mineral. And, and, and that someone wants to pay them for that. Now, I understand to, extra, uh, to extract that mineral, it has to be done in, in a safe manner. And we're, I think we're all on the same page there. It's just a matter of who controls that, whether the legislative body should control that or the DEC, the expert, uh, should control it. Let me just share some numbers with you in the community that I live in, Broome County, New York. A study that the county had done over the course of the next several years, hydrofracking could spend on 4,000 wells $14 billion. $14 billion in the community. And that $14 billion already, our local governments have already decided that they've got a plan so that those roads, Senator, get fixed, unlike in Pennsylvania where they did destroy the roads. Because again, we want to be smarter than them. Uh, and the roads get fixed, and, and companies start up, trucking companies, welders. You know, I talked to the people at BOCES the other day, and I said, if, if we begin the process of hydrofracking in upstate New York, we'll have to start a new division of Broom Tioga BOCES just to train welders. We, we could use maybe two, three, four thousand of them in the course of the next several years. So this is a huge economic development opportunity. That's why I stand here extremely passionate at 1130 at night. Over 65 percent of the people in my district support hydrofracking. Now they support safe hydrofracking. They support it in a manner that it's not going to contaminate wells like they did in Pennsylvania, in a manner that it's not going to hurt the environment. Because as I said to somebody the other day, who knows more about our environment than our farmers? Our farmers have been protectors of our environment for generations. So why now would they want to ruin the environment in the beautiful landscape of the rolling hills of upstate New York and surrounding areas that have Marcellus Shale? So Mr. President, I Madam President, I apologize. I didn't recognize the change. Madam President, I, I stand here very passionate on behalf of the people that I represent, all 300,000, those who are for drilling and those who are against drilling. Because like those who are against drilling for the environment, I too care about the environment. And those who are for drilling for the economic benefit and the future of our communities, I support them too. I want to do this in the right way. But unlike my, some of my colleagues here, I have faith and confidence in the Department of Environmental Conservation in the state of New York. I believe they will be tougher. I believe they will be safer. And I believe they will overregulate. And I don't think that's a bad thing when it comes to hydraulic fracking, because others in the state of Pennsylvania and other places have made mistakes. So Madam President, uh, on behalf of the people I represent, uh, I stand here and say that I am disappointed that the legislature or politics needs to get involved in this process. I wish we would let those who are the experts, those who we hire in the department, those who are the scientists, those who are the geologists, those who understand, not those of us who are generalists, who, are, who, who think we understand what hydrofracking means and hydrofracking does. So, Madam President, I am going to have to oppose this bill vigorously tonight and into the future. Um, I, hope that, um, I hope that it doesn't pass, because I believe for the economic future of upstate New York, and quite frankly, for the environmental safety 
I want the DEC to make those decisions, not a legislative body.